welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a fall recommends video for you. 30 different books, all different genres from children's books to adult, fantasy, science fiction, graphic novels, all of those. And a lot of them are going to be spookier themed because when the weather starts to get colder and we're close to Halloween and Thanksgiving, I like a creepier book, especially if it's stormy outside. So that's kind of going to be the theme across the board here. And before I get into the recommendations, I'd really appreciate if you liked this video, subscribed if you want to see some more videos from me. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday, sometimes Sunday. Alright, let's get into this video. Okay, starting off, I'm going to recommend a children's series to you. It's book one, Vampires Don't Wear Polka Dots. And this is book one in the Adventures of the Bailey School Kids series which follows a group of third graders as they kind of get into trouble investigating different things such as this one they think their teacher might be a vampire, other ones they think the cafeteria worker might be Cupid, and there's werewolves and leprechauns. It's a whole series. There's over 20 books now, I think. And I used to absolutely love this one. This is really great for like second, third grade, right before you get into middle grade but you're still reading chapter books. Absolutely adored the series when it came out. Okay, next group of books are going to be middle grade. The first one is The School for Good and Evil. This follows Sophie and Agatha, who two girls that live in a small town. They are friends, and from this town, there's always two people taken, two children taken, and each person goes to this storybook world where they learn to be good or evil, princesses or monsters. And in this one, Sophie and Agatha get taken, but they don't end up in the side of the school they think they're going to. And it ensues from there. There are three or four books in this series now. I absolutely loved it. I had a coworker whose 13 year old really loved it. It's funny enough that an adult can read it, but easy enough that middle grade levels can read it as well. Super fun, super cute. It made me laugh a lot. My second middle grade pick is The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, which I just did a review for up on the channel. And this follows Prosper, who is kind of his family's outcast. He's a little bit of a misfit. They're all very successful, and he's fairly average. And one day he comes home with his twin sister, Prue, and they find out that their family's good fortune is due to a contract they signed with a fiend centuries before. And then this chaos ensues once they find out that the demon is actually inside of Prosper. So he tries to save his family and himself from this demon who ends up being funny. It's also a series. Book 2 is going to be coming out next year in 2019. I gave it 5 stars. I think it's super cute. I would definitely give this to about a 12 year old. It's a little too scary for a little bitty kid though, so I wouldn't hand that to them. Plus there's a bat cat named Toad. Okay, moving on, now I have a bunch of YA recommendations for you. The first one is The Merciless, which follows Sophie, which follows. Next we have The Merciless, which follows Sophia, who is new to town, and she gets adopted basically by the popular girls at school. This is like Mean Girls with an Exorcist twist. It's creepy, it's really messed up. Um, I wouldn't recommend this to really young teenagers, maybe a little bit older, but if you're looking for something that's going to make you cringe, I definitely recommend this one. Next up we have the Stalking the Jack the Ripper series, which follows Audrey Rose Wadsworth, who is living during Victorian times, and her dad is very protective after the death of her mother, doesn't want her leaving the house, doesn't want her involved in anything, but she has a passion for science. And lucky for her, her uncle is a mortician, is a medical examiner, and performs autopsies and takes her on secretly as an apprentice. This first book is called Stalking Jack the Ripper, and it follows her and her new companion Thomas as they hunt down Jack the Ripper. And obviously it's a little grotesque if you're not comfortable with forensic science, especially involving murder. And the second book is called Hunting Prince Dracula, which takes place at a school in Romania where Thomas Cresswell and Audrey Rose go to learn more about forensic science and compete for a place in this forensic science school that is very prestigious. And while they are there, there are many bodies that start popping up 
drained of all their blood. So is it really a vampire or is it something else? And then in the third book, Escaping from Houdini, they are on a ship together, Audrey Rose, Thomas Cresswell, her uncle, and her cousin are all on the ship and there happens to be a carnival aboard the ship but people keep going missing posed missing and then are murdered with tarot cards and they're posed in a way that follows each card it's a little bit more of a grotesque YA. i love it though so if you're interested in forensic science and slightly darker tales i definitely recommend this one next up i have the clockwork scarab and this is book two the spirit glass charade which follows mina which follows Mina Holmes, who is the niece to Sherlock Holmes, and Evelyn Stoker, who is the sister to Bram Stoker, and they are trying to solve a murder as a team, and it has a lot of paranormal elements to it. It's steampunk, Victorian steampunk, with a lot of paranormal elements to it, vampires and sacrifice and a lot of Egyptian mythology in the first book. I really loved it. It's a great if you like mystery and Victorian setting and steampunk and paranormal. Yeah, definitely check this one out. Next up, we have one of my favorite YA series from when I was actually a teenager, and that is Strange Angels. This follows Drew Anderson, who has been raised her whole life with her dad to hunt down demons and monsters and all of that, and one day her dad gets turned into a zombie and she has to figure out how to survive, and the series unfolds. It's a lot like a mix of Supernatural, Vampire Academy, and... Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I love it. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of humor. There's just a little bit of a love triangle. It just moves super fast and all the books are fairly short so you can get through them really fast. But if you're interested in kind of a throwback, I definitely recommend that one. Next I have Hemlock which follows a small town. A girl, her best friend is murdered and a bunch of other girls start to go missing and there's these people that are infected with the lupine virus and they are segregated from the rest of the population, they have to register, and she's wondering if it is a werewolf that is doing all these killings. It's a very tense book, very high action, kind of questioning whether or not these people should have to be segregated, and is she going to be the next one killed? And then, same line, Moonlight is another werewolf book, but this one. So this follows Kayla who's a nature lover and she's on a camping trip with a bunch of other people about her age and she meets Lucas who she instantly love at first sight type situation. But while they're on this camping trip, this group of humans discover werewolves, that they are werewolves and begin hunting them and it's sort of like, it's a cheesy romance with a little bit of a conspiracy theory element and like they're out to get them. Next, werewolf themed book is The Dark Divine, which follows Gracie. She is a pastor's daughter, and her childhood friend Daniel has been gone for a few years, but he comes back three years after he left, and all of a sudden their lives are all in danger, and all this crazy things start happening, and she has to try and figure out what is wrong with Daniel. Why is Daniel dangerous? And of course there's some teen rebellion happening, some romance, some action, some horror elements. It's a really fun read. And next one, The Hollow Kingdom. This is a little bit more of a classic type of fantasy in which a girl... Okay, so this, The Hollow Kingdom follows Kate and Emily. They are recently orphaned girls and they move in with a family member when they discover that they aren't 100% human. Kate especially has some elf ancestry and when this is discovered she is kidnapped and taken as the Goblin King's Bride, and this follows her struggling to adjust to being in the Goblin Kingdom and growing to get to know her new husband, and all these evil forces happening in the Goblin world, and the danger that she and her sister find themselves in. I really loved this one. It's great classic fantasy. And then one that made me laugh, because Pride and Prejudice is one of my all-time favorite classic novels. I've reread it a bunch of times, love Jane Austen, she created the romantic comedy genre, but Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies takes that story and throws in zombies and training to kill, ladies are no longer attending balls, they have 
to go to either China or Japan to learn to fight the undead. And it's just a really funny one if you like classics and you're comfortable reading them. It's just a funny variation and the whole series continues being pretty great. Next we have Silver and the Blood, which follows two teenage girls and their mothers are both from Romania and then they become of age. Their moms send them there to, well, to get their inheritance which turns out to be a shape-shifting power, and each girl gets to find out which kind of shapeshifter she is. And the chaos, if their family is evil, is it good? Is there's a conspiracy to kill the royal family? Are they going to protect them? Are they going to support their family? It's, it's fun, really quick, fast-paced book. You'll fly right through it. Then we have The Dark Days Club, which takes place during the Regency era where our main character is getting ready to be presented to the queen to enter society and hopefully one day get married. She is not allowed to ever talk about her family and she doesn't know why she's being raised by an aunt and uncle. And she discovers she is a demon hunter, which is crazy and everything falls apart from there while she's trying to both be the proper lady and take on these powers that she suddenly has. Next we have Obsidian, which is basically Twilight with Aliens. It's fantastic, it's funny, it's got cute romance, I loved it. I've read the first three and a half books in the series and The Darkest Star is the spin-off series that's starting. It just came out this month and I definitely recommend checking them out, if, even if you're not into science fiction, I love this one. The last YA recommendation is actually a mystery, a study in Charlotte, which follows the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson in this book's world. In this book's world, um, Sherlock Holmes and John Watson are real people, and their biographer was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And we are following their descendants in modern day America at a boarding school, and somebody is trying to frame them. And they get to meet, and they fight all the time, and there's issues. There's Charlotte Holmes, is a little bit moody and hard to get to know, whereas John Watson's descendant Jamie is very friendly, he wants to be best friends with her, wants to reunite their families, and she is resistant, 100% resistant, so it's cute watching them fight and bicker, and it's a great series. Moving on, we have graphic novels and comics. The first one is huge, I almost hit myself in the face with this. You can see it's massive. It's over a thousand pages. This is The Walking Dead Compendium 1, which if you've seen the TV show, you pretty much know what it's about. I like this comic. It's a little bit slow paced, but the art style is really great and it's not hard to follow at all if you're not used to comics. And it's what happens if zombies take over and the apocalypse happens. Next, we have the graphic novel Monstrous. Volume 1, which is really great art deco art style, and I just love how beautiful it is. It's the monsters and this fantasy world, and you're following this girl who, is she good, is she evil, and I just love the art style. Okay, now on to two classic spookier reads. The first one is The Woman in Black. That's not wanting to focus. Um, which follows a young lawyer. I don't look up the time frame for this because I don't know. So, the woman in black follows Arthur Kipps, who is a young solicitor, and he has been assigned to go out to the English Moors, this creepy, creepy place, where one of his clients has recently passed away, and it is his job to get his property settled, make sure all the papers are in order, and get to selling the house basically as fast as he can. He gets there and he doesn't understand why everyone's so freaked out that he's there or what's going on. It, it, he's just like, okay, it's a house. And then he spends the night there. And it's a classic ghost story. It's definitely way creepier than the movie. If you saw the movie, it's ten times better. There's a dog, which I always love when there's a dog in the story. And I really enjoyed this one. It's really fast. You get through it pretty quickly. And it's supposed to read like when you're at home and the power's out and you start telling ghost stories around the fire. I really enjoyed that one. The next one is The War of the Worlds, once again, way better than the movie. And you're following this guy as he is trying to get across the countryside after these 
machines come from the sky. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Okay, War of the Worlds is another one that takes place in England. It is ten times better than the movie. I remember just being so annoyed with all the screaming in the movie. This one's way better. It follows the Martians attacking England and this one guy you follow. It's a classic just science fiction horror novel that'll creep you out and but it's a classic. Okay, after classics I'm gonna go into fantasy series which first up we have a discovery of witches and the All Souls trilogy. This is book three, The Book of Life and in that book one in book one discovery of witches you follow diana who is an american scholar visiting oxford to do some research she's a historian and one day when she's in the library her reference materials pulls up this weird book that she didn't ask for she goes to ask about it they don't know where it came from and then it disappears and from there we find out that diana is actually a witch in a world in which vampires witches and demons all exist and she ends up teaming up with Matthew who is a vampire and also working at Oxford University and they go on this grand adventure to figure out this big book that is supposed to have the answers to fix their world basically and they fall in love of course and it's a great series I enjoyed it it's got adventure it's got romance it's smart and it's believable the setting is very atmospheric and you get into it and it's very believable Next up we have Nevernight, which I'm sure you've heard of. It is follows Mia Corvier, who is an assassin, out for vengeance after her whole family is killed after a failed coup. She is spunky, to say the least. If you like foul-mouthed characters, dark themes, morally ambiguous characters totally recommend it and there's animal companions obviously in her shadow mr kindly who is a cat and totally recommend that one moving on to science fiction recommendations i have one because i'm not a huge science fiction fan but that is the anomaly this follows norman this follows nolan who is an archaeologist who has a youtube channel in which he tries to link conspiracy theories to archaeological evidence usually they go oh we can't find anything but he and his team go to the grand canyon hoping to find a cave that has been written about previously and this is their pilot episode to turn their youtube channel into a real tv show and they get there and they can't find it and then they spend days on this river can't find it can't find it all of a sudden they find it and chaos ensues from there aliens and conspiracy theories and villains and it's like an indiana jones mixed with you two it's funny it's creepy there's definitely moments where you're creeped out and i really loved it if you're into science fiction definitely check that this one is my life as wow we have this one which is my life as a white trash zombie and in that one so in that one we follow angel crawford who is down on her luck she doesn't know what she's doing she didn't finish school she lives in a trailer with her dad she's unhappy she's not in love with her boyfriend like everything's wrong she's a druggie all that she wakes up in a hospital bed and she thinks she overdosed she thinks something bad happened turns out she died in a car accident and came back as a zombie and she has this mysterious letter saying just go to this job take care of it we'll make sure you're okay and she slowly begins to understand oh no i'm a zombie and need to eat brains and she ends up working at a morgue it totally reminds me of i zombie but it, there's also mystery elements to it and it, it's really fun if you liked i zombie definitely check this one out uh, language and content probably definitely not suitable for children though and then a general fiction kind of ghost story if you've heard of the time traveler's wife this is her fearful symmetry by the same author and it follows two twin twin girls who find out that their aunt passed away and she left them all of her possessions and they get to England and they're in her apartment and they're sorting through her stuff. They're getting to know her neighbors, her boyfriend that she left behind. And then they begin to notice that she might not have left the apartment like they thought. And that she may have actually set a trap for them. 
So it's definitely a creepier ghost story. Twisted, morally corrupt characters. If you're looking for a slower paced ghost story that's not like downright scary, I definitely recommend that one. Okay, the next four are some of my favorite truly scary, gory horror novels that are true blue horrors. The first one, I'm sure you've heard of it. I'm positive you've heard of it, is The Shining by Stephen King. You, if you don't know what that one's about, it is a family of three. Jack is the father and he gets a job taking care of the Overlook Hotel for the winter. It's a resort style hotel and they only have guests during the summer because it gets snowed in. But they hire a family to come in and live there and take care of it during the winter just to make sure nothing catastrophic happens. So Jack takes his wife and his son with him and they settle in for the winter. Soon they find out that one of the previous people that had his position murdered his entire family and the hotel has a dark history. They primarily follow his son and you've heard of Red Ram. Red Ram. Yeah, that's from there. So definitely scared me so much. And if you do read this one, the maze scene is my favorite, 100%. Another Stephen King is Bag of Bones. This is one of his more recent books, written in the past 20 years, I think. And it follows an author who recently lost his wife. He moves to their vacation home to try and write a book and get away from his sorrow and try and recover. He ends up meeting a young single mom there, and there's this dark mystery surrounding her and her daughter. He begins to get really close to them but also begins to notice things happening in his house, like magnets moving, or he thinks he sees things, and oh, this one gives me chills. It's has more beautifully written language than his older books, like The Shining, but it still gives you chills and you will not sleep well. All right, another older Stephen King, Salem's Lot. If you like creatures, like vampires, I totally recommend this one. They're not pretty in this book at all. If you're looking for a true blue monster vampire where it's they're just evil Salem's Lot it's great it's creepy you're in this town another author goes to a town and he's obsessed with this house and he doesn't know why he's obsessed with this house and slowly people begin to get sick and die but they aren't really dead they rise from the dead so definitely a great creepy one and my final recommendation is horror store. If you have heard of this one, if you haven't heard of this one, it is basically, it's from Quirk Books and it's designed to look like an Ikea catalog. You flip through it, it's the same size as one. It has different ads and different uh, descriptions of furniture that's there. And it starts out with this group of people that work in Orsk, I think is the name of the store. And they have to stay overnight because somebody's been messing with the merchandise. And this very gory, almost poltergeist type haunting begins to take place. And there are moments I was completely disgusted in this book and it's scary and definitely don't give this to little kids. But if you're looking for a gory one, I would totally recommend this horror book. Okay guys, that was my 30 full spooky read recommendations. If you want full synopses for these books or a better <laughs> review like written out, go down to the description box, click the link to my blog, the recommendations page, scroll down to the spooky reads, and each book will be listed in order of when I posted them, and you can click to read more about them, how many pages there are, and things like that. If you like this video, please like it, leave, please like it, subscribe, and I post videos every Tuesday and Friday. Have a great day, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!